Hey y'all, it's Amanda. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to talk about some celebrity or influencer book recommendations. Alright y'all, so I've got the camera kind of down a little bit so you can see Simba. Yeah, I don't know. This angle's not the greatest, but we're here. So I want to talk about some books that have themes of whether they have celebrities in them, famous people, or social media influencers. And so I know that today, in today's world, it is like we're inundated with influencers everywhere for any kind of thing out there. And it can get annoying and repetitive in books, but there's also a lot of books that have like Hollywood themes or, or movies or different movie scripts and things like that that I thought would be fun to just put in a little video uh, talking about different books that I have read that I've enjoyed that have those themes. Now, I'm not a big Hollywood person in, in, by any means. I'm not a big influencer person, <laughs> by any means but I think it's fun to kind of read these books at times and so I thought well let's put them all together in a video let me know down below are you into these kind of books what's your thoughts it's okay <laughs> safe space here uh I'm kind of on like in the middle of it like I have to be in the mood for that type of book, you know what I mean? Um, sometimes, I will say, like, one of the books that I mentioned in this video, like, the hashtags got really annoying, got something, stuff like that. But overall, the story, the plot of, like, Hollywood, maybe there's an author writing a script or, you know, there's a couple trying to make a movie or something fun. Or there was a girl, you know, maybe in historical times, we have the Hollywood girl trying to find her destiny <laughs> kind of thing. Who knows? Uh, the influencer stuff, I know there's a lot of technology that gets outdated very quickly in these books, too. So that's kind of a thing. But I thought this would be a really fun video just to kind of compile in my series of like themed recommendations. The first one I did was like road trip books. And so now this is the second one for influencer Hollywood books. Okay, long enough intro, let's get into it. First on the list is Love Unscripted by Denise Hunter. Now, you know, I talked about this recently. It was a cute summer read that I read this year. I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. This is about a girl, Chloe Anderson, and she is an author who has a movie coming up, and so it's for her romance novel. And so she's really nervous about this guy, Liam Hamilton, who is being cast as the male lead, and he's not really like that great of a guy. You know, he doesn't have that great of a reputation and all that stuff. And so she lets her feelings be known to him over he overhears it <laughs> over a phone conversation and his reputation continues to go south when his agent says hey y'all need to be fake dating okay uh <laughs> i can't make that up y'all see it the cat getting in the camera anyway Liam's agent says, look, y'all need to fake date to increase your reputation here, Liam, because you got this bad boy image or whatever, player image. And so she ends up agreeing to fake date him because they were kind of caught in a weird situation as usual in these type of books. Uh, and so people were like, who's this girl with him and that kind of stuff. So they agreed to fake date, create this wholesome fake relationship just to kind of gain something for each other, him, his, his reputation. She's trying to gain social media influence, like for her books and things online. And they're like, what could go wrong with this? But then, of course, you know, feelings start to come up and what are they going to do next, right? They actually really like each other. Secrets start to come out, all this stuff. So, yeah, I really like this one. It is a clean romance and I like the interactions between Liam and Chloe most of all. It is a good summary read, as you can tell from the cover. And I will say that this does have a third act breakup, which is why it's not really a five star. It's like a four star. It's just an average summer read that I really enjoyed. Um, so, yeah, I like the audiobook is really good, too. She helped narrate Loyally Luke in my paper fashion. So if you like that narration, you would like this audiobook, I think. I really liked her voice. So and you get a lot of details that is behind the scenes of like the movie creation, which I thought was pretty cool too. So yeah. Now we're gonna move this up because <laughs> Simba decided he didn't want to be in the video, so <laughs> he said, I'm out. <laughs> he went under the bed. So this is more comfortable for me to just sit here like this. So all right. Next, we have got one that I read recently and talked to you guys about, and that is The Road Before Us by Janine Roche, and this is one I honestly read and reviewed, it, reviewed this year. I ended up giving this one four stars, and this is uh, one that I talked about in the road trip recommendation video as well, so I'll, I'll be brief, but this is a Christian contemporary fiction story, and it's surrounding this road trip on Route 66. From the very beginning, you're very invested in the characters, their backstories, and this journey on the road trip. This story really begins with Jay Jessup and 
she's in court with her fiance because he scammed all of their financial clients out of millions of dollars in a huge Ponzi scheme. And so one of the clients was this huge Hollywood star. Her name was Benny Bernice Aldridge. And so her adult foster son is filming this documentary retracing Benny's 1956 trip that started the love between Benny and her recently deceased husband, Paul. And so you see a lot of the Hollywood stuff that happened of how she kind of got started in this. And that's all I wanted to include it in this recommendation because you see a lot of that on this road trip. So this is kind of a good combination of this is a good road trip story and it's a good Hollywood story as well. We see Jade, Benny, and Bridger in this road trip in modern day. Plus, we see the flashbacks of Jade's life in 2003 when she was kidnapped by her non-custodial father. There's a lot of drama with that. And then we see Benny's life in 1956. So, there's like three timelines in this. And Jade is reliving some trauma. And we see Benny experiencing signs of dementia as well as she recounts her life from 1956. And we see a lot of growth and forgiveness in this as their trip progresses together. So, I highly recommend this if you like good road trips or Hollywood stories and women's fiction this is a really good one to read so yeah now the next one I want to mention is All That Really Matters by Nicole Deese. I did talk about this recently in another tag video but I have to add this in here because this is one of the top books I've ever read in the last three years of my channel. It's one of the, still one of the top probably it might be in the top 10 I don't know that would be a good video anyway <laughs> So, uh, Nicole Dees, she just writes these beautiful stories, and in this one, this was, did not disappoint. It was my first Nicole Dees. It's a Christian contemporary romance. So, this story is about Molly McKenzie, who is a huge social media influencer in the online beauty and fashion world. She has a huge following. A manager turned boyfriend tells her at the very beginning of the story that there's an upcoming audition to host a makeover show for America's underprivileged youth, and he's like, to gain an edge on the competition you need to have an edge. And so he tells her that she needs to volunteer for something to make it look great on her presence online. She goes to volunteer at this summer transitional program for aged out foster kids. And so she works with the program's director, Silas Whitaker, and he doesn't really find her as charming. He kind of like skeptical of her because of her influence and stuff online. And we really see this transformation of Molly's heart. She has a lot of self-reflection and she learns about what matters most in life. And this book just really shows us how we can get so wrapped up in the online social media platforms, lose sight of reality and what really matters most in life. Molly really experienced some of the best character growth I've seen in a story and to see the romance with her and Silas was really nice. I loved how he was just very understanding of everything that she was dealing with after they kind of got over their initial meetup <laughs> and everything. And so um, I also really like how this does not have like a typical conflict that some romances do so that there's not like a third act breakup or anything. Uh, this was more so a real life situation conflict of what was going on in the story. And so I, I really liked how the characters work together to make everything work in the end. So this has a lot of good faith content as well. And it really just shows it uh, has good prayers and learning how to trust the Lord in his plan and how he's going to make everything work out for our good. So yeah, I highly recommend this one. Book two is also really great. It's all that it takes and it follows Molly's social media um co-worker manager whatever she was <laughs> Val and you get to see her her romance in the next one so right. yeah. you didn't think I wasn't gonna put this in here right because we got the bodyguard by Catherine Center and this is one of my favorite Catherine Centers actually I've only read like three of hers now but I have really enjoyed this one I got four stars it is fun it's it's clean it's got lovable characters it's a it has an uplifting ending and I, I really enjoyed it so uh, this was actually the first Catherine Center I ever read I love this cover <laughs> And so uh, this is about Hannah, who is a protection security bodyguard, and she's recently gone through the death of her mother, a breakup with her boyfriend, trying to navigate through her next step in life. And so she's assigned on this project with this famous guy, Jack Stapleton in Houston. And so she has to pretend to be his girlfriend in front of his family. And she soon realizes that this is the best job. <laughs> That's almost like, uh, no, but I had a lot of fun reading this. The audiobook was really great and the characters are just funny and you really get to like get connected to the characters. And I really liked how Catherine Center turned this into almost like a good rom-com in a way. And I could see this being like a Netflix show or something. Like I just really enjoyed it. I thought the fake dating trope was done very well. And there was a lot of high stakes stuff at the end. You really got to see the characters get to know each other. And like I said, this is a good, clean, secular romance, um, but it does have some language. So just be aware going into that. Just a couple of 
instances of the Lord's name in vain in this, just to be clear, that her boss was trying to be like this big and bad guy, and he was said that a couple times. I didn't like that at all. I think the author was just trying to make him like a very hard, difficult character to deal with, but you know, I don't really care for that, but um, it wasn't like our main character, so I was able to overlook it, but just wanted to mention that. There is like a part in this that does have like where the dad's like praying to like whatever gods and goddesses they believe in. That's kind of weird at Thanksgiving. I was like, what is this? That's random. Uh, but other than those two things, I really enjoyed this story. I felt like it was funny and just a good, good summer read. So I recommend this if you're okay with some of those things I mentioned. So now look, we cannot talk about celebrity romances without talking about the love script by tony shallow i really enjoyed this it's the christian contemporary romance and i gave this five stars it's all about a hollywood movie star named lamont and his mother's hairstylist nevaeh nevaeh is helping his sick mother out she's leaving one day the paparazzi ends up capturing a photo on his front porch of them together and that has people in the public wondering if lamont's christian values have been all for show and so pub the public ends up kind of going crazy over this photo there's cancel culture stuff with him going on and so his team feels like it would be appropriate for them to fake date during this time so that it can appear that he's staying, staying true to his Christian values. And so Lamont and Nevaeh, they don't want to lie. So they end up actually dating and to see how things go and because they don't want to dishonor God. So you really see their journey of them dating and getting to know each other, but also seeing is the paparazzi going to be too much for their relationship because of a, being a famous person like that would be really hard in public and everything with her job and as a hairstylist is kind of going crazy. And so, yeah, this the faith is what stood out most to me. I loved how refreshing it was to have this strong Christian male lead in the story. His friends, Chris and Tuck, they're really great. You see them kind of like texting back and forth in this and they're like saying, hey, I'm going to pray for you, man. I thought that was a really good thing to see. I really related to Nevaeh and some of her church struggles that she went through in this, ministered to me in this, and encouraged my faith. I also really appreciated the conversation surrounding abstinence before marriage in their relationship and how it was completely okay to wait. They had that discussion in this. I think that we need more of that portrayed in these books. One thing I'll say is like, this is pretty unrealistic, right? Like, you're not probably going to have like this big famous guy from the Christian side in real life, but I know several people have said that about this book but it was just a good representation of something we would like to see a good story that kind of thing so take that for what you will I highly recommend it it was a great Hollywood romance on the deeper side of things we've got in a far off land by Stephanie Lansom now this one is one of my favorite books it's a prodigal daughter's type story the ending had me in tears it was really good this is about our character Minerva and she goes to Hollywood from the Midwest in an effort to make it big to get money to help her family back home and so there's a lot of debt they're gonna lose everything that they own so that's why she goes off to try to find herself and find a place in Hollywood and it's not good she finds herself on the streets making a lot of mistakes and getting with the wrong people very quickly she meets this guy Max it starts to get better as he's helping her kind of figure things out but she ends up waking up one day next to a dead film star what and I mean that's all you need to know really for this you see her getting blamed for this murder and hiding out and trying to clear her name keep her family safe. It's a whole thing. So we really see Minerva go through a lot of hardships in Hollywood. There's a lot of sadness and hurt. This is set like in the 1920s. I want to say, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the Great Depression time period or so. So um, there's just a lot of hardships and stuff that she went through during this time. And God was with her throughout the entire time, even when she didn't see it. Her father's, you see another point of view of her father. He's worrying about her the whole time. And just seeing that prodigal daughter moment was absolutely beautiful. It made me cry. It was a really great message about forgiveness. I, I highly recommend reading this. I only, the only thing I'll say is I really wish that there was a little bit more explained with her faith. But other than that, it was so good. And there is some content warnings in this. Let me look at my review here. We've got, this has... Sexual assault, prostitution, smoking, drinking, a closed door scene, not graphic. Um, there may be some other things I missed, but uh, this is basically like Hollywood in the 1920s to 30s. So you can kind of see what I'm saying here, but it had a good forgiveness of faith right in here. That So I highly recommend reading this book. It, it's definitely one for more of an adult reader. I wouldn't necessarily want someone under 17 reading this personally, in my opinion, but uh, it's just got a great message regardless. And i uh, definitely going to try to read more of Stephanie's books in the future. So the yeah. mention is Five Days in Sky by Carla Loriano. And I ended up giving this three and a half, rounded up to four. I don't own this anymore. I had unhauled it because I didn't really plan to reread it. But it was still one I want to mention because it has an immersive setting in Scotland. And our main character is kind of traveling throughout Scotland 
one so that was really fun to see our main characters are james uh and andrea it was fun to see them kind of get to know each other and everything it's lots of sarcasm flirty moments that kind of stuff but andrea has went through a lot of hard things and you really see her like in her brokenness come back to the lord and i loved seeing how james was willing to be there and step up for her in this story andrea is this um, hospitality consultant and so she has to snag this high profile client or she can kiss her promotion goodbye okay she ends up to going to meet this scottish celebrity chef named james mcdonald on the isle of sky and so things kind of going from there it's very insta love that's why it was kind of like that three and a half for me like obviously five days in the sky fall in love five days kind of thing but it was still like a good story they had some good chemistry together i had fun reading it so i put it in this recommendation video because i think several of y'all would enjoy it it's but either way i want to in include this because it had a celebrity chef and you don't see that a lot in books so right. yeah next we have got dun 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 stay with me by becky wade now i've talked about this for a long time it's definitely one of my top favorite becky wade books ever so if you start with becky wade i recommend starting with stay with me that's just me i gotta read some more of her backlist to see where i land with those but I absolutely love this book. This is a five star. Becky Wade's a favorite author of mine. And it's a Christian contemporary romance. And so the first book, this is the first book in the Misty River series. Where we have Genevieve or Jen and Sam Turner. Off of Sam finding this random girl, Jen, asleep in his guest house on the farm. He soon finds out that she has just passed out there. She was driving and she ended up passing there. And that she's under the influence of pills. He finds the pills and he quickly decides that he doesn't really want anything to do with this because of some things that has happened in his past. Jen is this very famous Bible study author who has an addiction to oxycontin prescribed these pills for an injury that she had a year ago and so she is relying on them in this addiction that she has to opioids and so she continues to take them when she should have stopped and she's developed an addiction and so she decides that she wants to get clean but the only way that she can do it is to be away from her mom and dad and she doesn't really want anybody to really know about this because of her public influence she kind of wants to just do this uh you know, under the radar. And so she decides to ask Sam if she can rent his guest house on the farm in an effort to stay there and get clean. And so because of the issues from Sam's past, you see that he wrestles with this decision, but he ultimately allows her to stay there to help her on her journey. There's also like a side mystery in this about Jen's parents that you're trying to figure out too. Jen is also one of the Miracle Five who survived a big earthquake 18 years ago. So you see like on a missions trip. So you see all of like the backstory kind of piecing that together along the way as well. I really like that because you get to kind of see the other characters are going to be involved in the later uh, books in the series. The message that God does not abandon you is full front and center here in what Jen was going through in her addiction. I liked how she handled the influencer side in this and how she uh, like how the things wrapped up with that. I don't want to say too much but it was really great to see how she handled everything in the end with her addiction and um, how Sam helped her along the way, which is beautiful. So I have read this twice and it's just one of my favorite books. The last book that I wanna mention here is Two Part Sugar, One Part Murder by Valerie Burns. This is a secular cozy mystery. And I read the first two books in the series. I don't plan to continue on in this one, but I wanna mention it because I, it was actually really fun whenever I read it. I just got kind of burnt out on all the hashtags <laughs> that she kept putting in here. Uh, the first book I did get five, stars and then I read the second one and I'm like gave it four stars so I'm like I'm kind of getting over the hashtags this <laughs> is a lot of social media talk but if I still want to mention it because it's one that a lot of y'all would have enjoyed and would probably still enjoy and so this is the book one in the Baker Street mystery series I did sell these I used to own them but the story centers around Maddie Montgomery and her groom is a no-show to their live stream wedding there you go there's a the social media stuff they live stream in the wedding honey he don't show up and so she is devastated and not really sure what she's going to do with her life and things start to change for her when her great aunt octavia passes away and leaves maddie a bakery and so she goes there she's got the home the bakery and the two new 250 pound english mastiff dog okay named baby in michigan and so she goes up there and she's used to like the rich and fancy life and her aunt's rule is that maddie has to live in her home and run the bakery shop for one year before she can try to sell it maddie don't even know how to bake okay so that's kind of fun to kind of see her kind of get on and figure out how to do all that stuff uh in this new bakery this new town and all things start to get crazy real fast when the town mayor is stabbed in her bakery and of course as usual she's blamed for it and now they gotta 
solve the case okay so maddie and her friends ended up working together to solve this case so yeah it was just a fun ride the story is clean and whimsical and hilarious there's a lot of good like bakery stuff going on in here there's like recipes in the end as usual in cozy mysteries and if you love dogs that's really great because you get a lot of details with the dog in this so that was awesome we'll say if you are sensitive to alzheimer's or dementia there is a character in this who is struggling with that a little bit more on page throughout the story so just want to mention that but oh, i enjoyed this book the there were some like bookish references a couple times that like prayer was mentioned too or turning things over to the lord and letting him handle it so that was really nice to see so that's what i'd recommend because it has a lot of like social media influencer stuff like she's always doing like hashtag bakery stuff and that gets a little bit old real quick but i still want to put it in this video because i know a lot of y'all have read this and enjoyed it too so yeah it's not like a bad book or anything it's just like that it does if you do not like social media stuff like you probably wouldn't love this but if you're okay with that give it a go give it a go so yeah that's all the recommendations i have for this video a little bit chaotic sorry i was looking at my notes it's been a while since i've read some of these so i did have to like screenshot my reviews because your girl memory is gone on some of these but <laughs> it is what it is i'm full transparency that's what i did so i hope that you enjoyed this video let me know if you read any of these books down below in the comments if you're interested in reading any of them let's chat below as always in the comments thank you so much for watching and i'll see y'all in the next video bye y'all